What's going on everyone? It's Robert O'Crook from the Digital Nomads Forum. And this week's video is about what existing digital nomads are screwing up big time right now and what people who are aspiring to become a digital nomad can and need to avoid, at least in my humble opinion. So I was having a conversation with someone recently about some of the content that I've recently uh, published for the people in the Digital Nomads Forum. And they asked me <coughs> at one point, the thing that I'm confused about is, are you trying to uh, really help these people or make a lot of money? And let's, this got me like thinking big time because I really believe that the way for people to actually be of the best support, to be in the most deep service that they can be to others is to be supported. In some cases that support might be financial, in other cases it could be food, shelter, friendship, community, like the support that someone needs to feel happy and basically fulfilled is consistent. We all need it and how we uh, bring it to ourselves, whether it's through trades and exchanges or through purchasing it when we can, if it's possible. Obviously, you can't purchase uh, friendship, but food and shelter you can purchase. And so, one of the biggest missteps that I see existing digital nomads making right now is that they've kind of been successful, which is amazing. Kudos to them in stepping out of their traditional job or lifestyle where they're kind of feeling limited into one where they're working 100% remotely, they're able to travel the world if they choose. That's a huge accomplishment. So they're killing it there, kudos again. But the gap that I believe that they're gonna eventually discover is that unless they are basically funding that lifestyle through giving value through helping other people, through doing purposeful work, then they're still eventually gonna come back to this position which they escaped from in the first place when they became a digital nomad. They were stuck in their hometown maybe, they were feeling this kind of just general discontent maybe. Maybe they just, you know, this feeling, maybe if you're watching this you can relate to knowing there's more for you in the world. There's a different way to live your life. And so they go went off and became a digital nomad. And for some time, that shift, that accomplishment, soothed that, that hurting inside or that discontent. Eventually though, it comes back, I believe, if we don't figure out how to be in service to others. So how do you be in service to others? It's one thing to be successful Working remotely, it's one thing to be successful earning a lot of money, but how can you actually do both? How can you earn as much as you can on projects that you care about and be fully remote? That's kind of like a triangle right there, like a sweet spot. And so I recently just published my free remote work masterclass uh, video in the Digital Nomads Forum. So if you go in the Digital Nomads Forum Facebook group, that's currently one of the two pinned posts, so you can find it there. And that's all about diving deep into it. It's not just about making money and being supported. These are important, absolutely. You need them to function, to thrive especially. But how do you actually get clients that you care about? How do you find those clients that are positively impacting the planet and that you want to be a part of helping? So that video is all about this. and so. For those of you who are watching this, if you're already doing it, then the invitation from me to you is just to reflect for a bit. Like, are you satisfied with the way you're earning your income? Is it coming from uh, helping people, helping this planet, positively impacting things? It's a very important question, I believe. And if you're thinking about doing this, becoming a digital nomad, well, just know you don't have to, you know, go to the bottom of the barrel and grab the the first but crappiest kind of remote opportunity or income that comes your way to start doing this. There's 
another way. And so that's what the remote work masterclass video is all about. So I know this is an interesting topic and I'd love to hear in the comments, what do you think the hardest part about finding work that's remote and meaningful is? Like where is the biggest challenge in that for you? Let me know and give me a like if you enjoyed this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in.